How's it going guys? In this video I'll be showing you the way I use to cure my turtle's rot. And I will do this treatment for 5 days in this video with the results. And a video for the next week and so on. I'm also changing my water so it's quite low and dirty. So right now will be day 1. I will need, you will need, hydrogen peroxide, betadine. It will stain so be careful of what you use. Um, triple antibiotic ointment. Uh, toothbrush, cloth, q-tips, and a container for your turtle uh, and for the dry dock. Um, you also need uh, extremely clean water so your uh, so the bacteria won't have a place to live and thrive and the shell rot won't grow as much. I'm gonna be combining this treatment with dry docking so uh, it's basically forcing it to bask and air dry which helps the turtle heal faster and prevents infection so it kills the fungus. So the first step, I'm just going to clean it with water. Clean the shell with water lightly. Try to scrape off the loose um, <coughs> scoots. Try to get in the holes. Apparently he doesn't like being scratched in the top. So do that. Now the back. And also try to get in the holes. Do this quick. Now that's the first part. So this is the third step. Um, and for the, for the first day, I'll be using cotton ball with hydrogen peroxide and apply it to the shell. I only use I'm only gonna be using it on the first day because it also kills the healing cells. But since it's not healing right now, I'm just gonna use it on the first day. And after that, I won't be using it. I'm going to pour some hydrogen peroxide onto the bowl over there. Okay, that might be too much, but it's fine. I don't have a cotton ball, so I'm just going to use these bandages. Then I'm going to dab it on his shell. As you can see, he's really stressed right now, so it'll be worse when it's when he's in dry docking uh, process. Okay, this bandages was a bad idea. Okay, now I'm gonna flip him over and do this side. Try to get in all the holes. These white bubbles are, it's the hydrogen turning into water and oxygen. And so that means it's cleaning. That means the hydrogen peroxide is killing the bacteria or germs. Um, and what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna wait till it dries. Now I'm just gonna wash, just gonna wash up the hydrogen peroxide.
So now I'm going to use Betadine and apply it on the shell to the affected areas. And remember, this stuff will stain, so. I'm actually going to take off the cap. There we go. You can also use a toothbrush to get it into the holes. Okay, now I'm just gonna dry dock it for an hour. Hey guys, I'll be adding the triple antibiotic ointment right now. Um, this is actually the second day, so the video is gonna be a bit weird. It's only this part though. It's because I uh, washed off the betadine, but I was supposed to keep it on. So this is the second day. So now I'm just gonna add some antibiotic cream with the beta on on it. I also waited for an hour. He's gonna get really slippery, so you need to handle him uh, carefully and make sure you don't drop him. So this is going to be the last step, I'm going to wait, I'm going to let him dry dock for eight, uh, 15 hours overnight. Make sure he has a, a warm place and a cold place so he can cool down if he's, if he's getting too hot from the 
the, the heat light and the UVB. So I'm gonna do this side now. And it should be done. So this is gonna be his new container. Half is cool and half is warm. He's looking pretty good. I'm gonna be doing the same process over this weekend. I mean this week but without the hydrogen peroxide because his cells are healing I don't want his cells his healing cells to get destroyed by uh, the hydrogen peroxide so now I'm gonna be telling you the things that will speed up the healing process uh, so calcium I'll be feeding my turtle cuddle bones uh, remember to remove the backing it's really hard the turtle can choke and um, uh, they can spit off like little pieces of these and it makes a mess in the aquarium and I also feed my turtle about this much for like three or four times a week I also cut it up into little pieces uh, smaller than this also so and turtles need a diet of calcium to phosphorus ratio of at least two to one so if you're giving your turtle uh, crickets or mealworms or other types of worms, they have they contain like really high levels of phosphorus and which will affect the cal absorption of calcium. If you don't have any of these, uh, you could eat. Uh, you could let them uh, eat the tur turnip greens because they contain a lot of calcium and less phosphorus, phosphorus, which is really good. But it's only the leaves that you feed them, so yeah. Next thing is um, also dechlorinate your water when you change it. If you don't, it will affect the nitrogen cycle because the chlorine will kill the good bacteria, which you, you don't want that to happen because they break down uh, waste, which is uh, poop or food. Um, which means uh, more fungus and bad bacteria will, uh, will feed on the waste. And something that can help this process is uh, you can get a biological filter, which will help the nitrogen cycle, which prevents uh, bacterial growth. So the third thing, you also need a strong UVB light and it ha has to be turned on for 12 to 14 hours. Um, it's essential for a turtle to get UVB because they need to absorb the calcium and food. So you need to change your UVB light after like six months to, to like a year depending on the bulb and the amount of time you use it for.